Welcome to Dead Man Token. Tonight's story is a blast from the past, as we take it back to the roots of the channel and present to you an absolutely terrifying dogman encounter. Of course, as ever, please do let me know what you thought down below in the comments box. Please do like and share. Why it really does help build the channel and our community further. And why not hashtag Team Fear and DMT's Cryptid Crew. And so, with that aside, let's get into tonight's story and title. Every once in a while, a cow is killed. Let's get straight into that. Hey DMT, I am an old man now, retired and living far away from where I grew up long ago. And following a fantasy story link, I stumbled upon your site on YouTube. and found humour that your channel's banner is a county map of where I spent my childhood years. So many stories, so many things happened there, long ago. And I have forgotten more real events than most will ever know. And there are far more stories that I did not personally witness, that are said to have happened there, than you can begin to imagine. My family left England at the turn of the 17th century. My grandfather claimed to have a direct descendancy from those who landed at Plymouth Rock. And our bloodline moved into the Appalachian Mountains before 1615. And by 1700, long before Tennessee was considered Western Carolina, we had a number of family residing in the area. Hints and ghouls, little people and fairies, werewolves and trolls, the Bigfoot kind, all were known well, quite feared and wisely avoided. Personally, I've seen the trolls, a number of them, and that is what they are, long before they were come to be known as Bigfoot. The English knew them as the stinking trolls, and they're just that, dim-witted, fast, powerful, stinking trolls. You let others kid themselves all they want, but listen to the Celts and the English, for the demeanour and behaviour of a troll is what they truly are. And the little people are well known to the Irish, for they are known by many there, if no more than in legend, as leprechauns. They break in, they steal, they take values. Their mantra is, shiny thing, and their heart is to own it. It is a curse from God for greed, and I have seen them as well. Now put no shiny, tinkin' toy or adornment on your child, for they will take it, and quite possibly your child as well. For the grim legend, of Rumpelstiltskin tells of just one such creature. And they're not demons, per se, but they are damned for their carnal greed. And werewolves are ample in Appalachians as well, but they do not, to my knowledge, shapeshift. Now we hear of dogmen in Michigan to the north, but centuries ago they were merely ungodly wolves or a cursed men. And I have more knowledge of these creatures by far than all the rest combined. Not from my childhood, but from my old age. You see, as my age increased and my health declined, I saw what I thought was wisdom in retiring to the West. And with this, I moved to the far western Texas, over a thousand miles away from my family lands. I was with this that I walked into a hell of dogmen, rarely spoken of, that only some recognize, mostly Mexicans. And I sold my farm and my wife of 38 years and I moved to Texas. A small rural village, and with a great price on a home that we found beautiful and quaint, and less than 10 inches of rain a year. There were no grounds to manicure, just sand and desert gravel, and cactus and tarantulas, and scorpions and snakes to watch for. Oh, and dogmen. But we did not know this before. Now my wife is half English, quarter Cherokee, and a quarter Irish, her temper to match hell, but with such secular beliefs, she must see it twice to believe it, while she tolerates my classical upbringing. My grandmother taught English and loved Chaucer and Grimm, and all points in between. And she did not have the childhood experiences I did, and so have I not seen it, she does not believe. Oh well, she didn't. My dogmen ordeals, beyond knowledge of stories and believing some who relate some, began one night, shortly after sunset, as I was looking for something in my truck outside. You see, we have a number of natural wildlife where I live, and so it's not unusual to have mountain lions, bobcats, raccoons, possums, armadillos, Mexican wolves and ample coyotes, all wandering about looking for scraps or small prey in the evening. 
and as I departed my truck and shut its door, I heard something off a few yards away. Oh, it sounded immediately large, maybe a mountain lion or a wolf, possibly a clumsy bobcat or opportunist coyote, or even a wounded deer, for we have a number of white-tailed deer and elk as well. And I called out, Who's there? Thinking that my voice would scare it, scare it away or simply make a predator growl back. But nothing. All things were silent. Well, it's not unusual to have illegals, Mexicans cross nearby. Maybe they were afraid of a threat and didn't want to reply, so I called back, Yo soy, and my name, but still, nothing. I go in the house and I don't think of it again. Now, a week later, I am once again outside after sunset, placing trash bags in the back of my truck to take to the nearby community dumpster near a small store. I need gas in the truck and the trash has to go. I place the last bag in the truck and I suddenly feel something is near. Maybe just on the other side of the truck. I call out again, but nothing. I stomp the ground and nothing. No sound, no movement. This time, I quickly go back in the house and get my old rifle. Well, it's an old lever action, a cowboy-style rifle, but chambered in a very large caliber. The 4570, often denoted as the buffalo gun. Some have even been used to hunt elephant in Africa long ago. I will drop a 2,000-pound animal in its tracks, and even enrage the 1,000-pound apex predator within 100 yards. I come back out and chamber around, and then I saw it before I left the porch. Standing in the back of my truck, my God, it was huge. It was, how can I describe it? It was approaching seven feet in height, slightly bent forward, but not quadrupedal. It stood upright and was not braced on the cap. It was standing. In the half moon lines and with the moon maybe 20 degrees to the right, as I looked at it, it didn't appear to have a tail and it had the hips of a man. But the legs, well, they were reverse bent, like the back legs of a dog or big cats. At its waist, it was tiny, no more than 15 or 18 inches in diameter. But what it didn't have in waist, it had in a giant barrel chest, maybe 40, 46 inches in diameter. Its arms were like a man's, shoulders too, but there was something wrong with them. The elbows reached down to the taper of the waist and the wrists almost to the knees, the claws, the claws or fingers or both seemed to be like steak knives, and they were almost to the thing's ankles. I stood in the truck, shoulders almost 90 degrees turned against my position, but its head was turned, facing me. Its ears were like some Halloween costume. They were also huge, fine lines, straight up, like the finest Doberman Pinchers ears. And they were almost goblin or demon-like, straight fingers of ear sticking almost straight up. Well, it still looked at me, and I came out of my survey of this thing, and I raised the rifle. Damn my truck! I aimed straight at it, mid-body, not caring if I shut out the back window, along with it, or not. When it turned its head to face straight forward of its body, and it was then that I saw the muzzle, for its coat almost sheened in the moonlight. But the shadows were too dark to take in the coat and features fully until now. It had the head of a classic werewolf. Like that Hugh Jackman movie, Van Helsing. Only this was real. The ears? I just couldn't quite stop staring at the ears. They had to be eight inches long. Long tapered to a needle-like end at the top of its head. Oh, it was unnatural. No animal has ears like that, I told myself. I'm holding my sights on the body, finger on the trigger. I'm watching to see what this thing is doing. And with a leap that looked like a cartoon. It jumped clear of my bed of my truck, plus three or four more feet in the air. And from a straight standing posture, it not only had jumped four to six feet from the flat of the bed surface, but it landed twenty or more feet from the side of the truck and ran into the desert and fast. Thirty-five, forty miles per hour, at least. I was faster than any coyote or any wolf I've ever seen. And for the night, I went back in the house. My wife asking me, are you done for the night? and I proceeded to tell her what had just happened. Well, of course, she didn't believe me, and dared to go outside to see for herself. I grabbed her by the arms and said, You will not go out there tonight. And she saw the seriousness in my eyes, 
and let it be. And the next morning, I came out to find all the trash in the bed of my truck utterly destroyed. Bags ripped, debris, food waste scattered everywhere. In the truck, outside the truck, everywhere. And not having seen it, she claimed I had confused a coyote for this thing. And I said, since when does a three foot long, 35 pound coyote take the form of a seven foot tall man dog headed creature? Her overall opinion changed less than two weeks later, when she saw her first one. Coming home from a bath soap and candle party, a friend of hers had had at her house, and it had lasted into the night. And as she pulled into the driveway, she told me that I saw what she said was in the truck a while back. I asked her what had happened, and she said, As I pulled into the driveway, it had stood up from behind a mesquite tree and quickly walked towards the desert behind the house, all the while telling its head to keep eyes on her as it did so. And this was all omitted to when she had pulled in the driveway and had laid on the horn of the car. She wouldn't get out until I came out to escort her in. Over time, we've seen a number of these creatures. They're apparently numerous in the area, in fact. I have seen a very large one, close to nine feet tall, accompanied by one over seven feet tall, and with two four-footers following them close behind. A family unit, it seems. A couple of years ago, we had an old she cougar in the area. I was bad about killing house pets left out. She was very large, close to 200 pounds and six foot long, not counting the tail. She was found dead on a nearby gravel road, and it had looked as if Giant Blade had hacked her to pieces, as if she had been chopped up by a lawn mower, in fact. The fish and wildlife came out, inspected the body and took her in, but the locals knew what had happened to her. She had been running from the desert to war's houses, and they had chased her down and ended her. And from that night until sunrise, something had consumed about 70 pounds of flesh from her body, and nothing Nothing in the desert could do that, not leave tracks or make a noise. Now these dogmen things, they are smart, almost people smart. I've heard them almost chuckle outside at night. And they can imitate, though rather poorly, other animals. And they will come up to the houses and tap, tap, tap on the doors and walls. They try to get house pets to bark in, so the owners will put them outside for obvious snacking reasons. If a dog or even coyote takes a piss in your yard, they'll knock on your walls for a week, thinking you have pets inside. They knock on windows as well, but they don't seem to try and break into houses, though more than once I have heard them trying to turn a doorknob, as if to be curious or see how it works or to see what your cave inside looks like. A year ago, a large one surprised me shortly after sunset. I had my rifle in my hand when it did. They normally don't come out until an hour or two after sunset, and they've gone back to hiding an hour before sunrise, but not this night. Well, it was barely ending twilight, not even night, and as I rounded the back corner of my house, I found myself less than 30 feet from a large, what I can only assume was a male one. And without a moment's hesitation, I raised my rifle and fired from the hip, hitting him squarely in the midsection. This round, at that range would have dropped a one-ton buffalo on his deck carcass. The dogman ran off into the desert, screaming. They aren't supernatural. There was blood everywhere. It was on me. It was on the ground. It was everywhere. And I figured there's no way he could have survived that. And the next morning, I went out trying to track him. Strangest track I have ever seen. It was not a wolf canine print. It looked as if you took a baseball bat and jabbed it down, began fast into the dirt. It was almost a perfect heavy round, punched into the dirt, and almost 12 inches back from the primary circle was a smaller circle, maybe one and a half in diameter. I quickly lost the imprint track, because still followed a broken sage and tumbleweed, and the blood trail. I tracked him for what had to be five miles, and the pace never slowed. Almost a steady gait, the span of the track didn't diminish, like he was tiring or losing energy. Almost a ten foot stride on each step, and he just kept going. Oh, that was more than I could say for myself. I am old and my stamina isn't what it once was. And I turned back, with almost five miles to walk home. I did not want to be out here, not after dark. 
that they are mortal, but they are not easily terminated. And what could easily take down a 1,000 pound predator in its tracks couldn't keep this thing from running over five miles to safety. There aren't a lot more powerful civilian weapons at that range than what I've fired at him. And I have spoke with others in my area who've had similar experiences. I was curious why there were so few cattle slaughters by these things. If they are that robust, but ranchers seem to agree. They seem to normally hunt solo or in a small two-unit group. And don't appear brave enough to take on a range of cattle, which of course can become mean and violent if attacked. Every once in a while, a cow is killed by them. But in one instance, the rancher said he saw it was not one or two, but four of them. He assumed it to be a group of just kicked out adolescent males who are as much into it for the blood sport as the food. And they had left most of the cow behind once done. I no longer go outside without being armed. And I can only imagine what's going on a little south of me at the border. Illegals crossing into the night. I know one thing. These creatures grow in population due to the amount of available food. And there's a lot of potential 200 pound per unit available food coming across that border in the night, untracked, in the middle of the night. And I am sure that many of them aren't making it to safety either. There are bad things out in that desert, just like there were in those green hills of Appalachia where I grew up. I hope this interests you if for no other reason than the information. It is the truth, as far as I can attest to what I've personally seen and experienced. Regards, Skeeter. Certainly another one. Wow. You really can't beat a report like that. A story of a man's life with ghouls and Bigfoots, dogmen, and many other things that go bump in the night. It really is such a pleasure when I receive an email of this quality with so many intricate, unknown details to present here for you guys. And of course, this is a personal favorite of mine, a personal passion that I used to be a lot more involved in, but are always open to hear more, learn more, and of course, get the dogman bug again. <laughs> Big thank you, Skeeter, for getting this over to me, buddy. I really hope I presented your experiences with finesse. And of course, if you have any other counts or reports that you can send my way, I'm all ears. Well, guys and girls as ever, you know the drill. Please do let us know what you thought down below in the comments box. Please do like and share. It really does help build the channel and our community further. And why not hashtag? Team Fear and DMT's Cryptid Crew. Now, if you had a true encounter or a paranormal experience or possibly just the local legends of your hometown, then please, please do get in touch with me at the contact email, which is as on screen. Contact the dead one at gmail.com. I really look forward to hearing from you. I hope everybody enjoyed that one as much as I. Leaves your mind thinking many different questions and Possibly you're out now Googling and researching the areas local to yourself. As always, remember, if you're going off into the wilderness, have three fail-safes in place. One, always let people know where you're going. Two, scout the path of which you're planning to take. And three, always look up the weather report, especially over here in rainy old England. But above all, guys, remember, be safe. Not sorry. <laughs>